because because Iceland takes gender equality very seriously. So how has these greater gender equality, you know, developed over the years and the situation has improved over the years, as you say. So how has it benefited Iceland and its citizens after all these years? Like, because, you know, in many countries, women do not work. So they still, like, they stay at home, they're housewives. So there are still many countries, right? But I think I, in Iceland, women work, right? Even after, even after they uh, become moms, after getting married and have a family, they get back to work. So they are, they are in the labor force. So how has this like gender equality has benefited citizens of Iceland and also the nation as a whole? What do you think? Yeah, just in terms of equality, that mm. all members of society have equal chance to do whatever they do, want to do with their lives, you know. And firstly, uh, in terms of education, you know, I think two thirds of, of, of higher education Students in, in Iceland, university students, are women. You know, two thirds are women, one third are men. You know, and and all women now, you know, work. You know, have their careers as well. And there have been some policies made about you know, uh, same pay for same equal work. Pay. Yeah, that was a big equal news. Pay. That was a big news. Yeah, I think in twenty eighteen. Mm, yeah, and also pay. some laws about you know if there are two persons applying for the same job. Uh, men mm. and women, if they are qualified the same, you know, the woman will get it if, if, if we need women, uh, you know, if women are under, uh, present, presented uh, uh, at this, you know, at this particular uh, job or whatever. So we have kinds, all kinds of legislations, but now we have, you know, career women, you know, and women, you know, are in key positions in Iceland society, you know, prime minister, presidents, you know, presidents of the sport associations and stuff like that, you know. And we need women in those important places and positions because they, women's voices need to be heard at, and, and, and at those places because at those places we set the strategy and set the tone of which kind of a society we want to live in. And recently in sports, for instance, women became key figures in the sporting movements, you know, the Sport and Olympic Association, the Youth Association in Iceland, the Football Federation, they are all, you know, uh, led on by women, you know, mm. women leaders. So, mm. so this is really important in sports because they listen to women's voices and so they can make women's sports more, you know, opportunity and make them more, you know, better in all ways. So it's very important, of course, to have women, you know, rising up to the to the key positions of society, and it's so, you know, it's only natural as we see it now, you know, but it hasn't been that in most countries, you know, uh, through the history, really, you know. So, so this is really important because then we have women taking making these important decisions. Then we have women, you know, uh, working on 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 on, on structured societies in more gender equal ways, you know. Mm. However, there's a you know, you know there is also a downside to it in terms of this that that women you know need to hold up many balls at the same time you know they are you know they still have to you know care for their homes. children homes yeah. yeah yeah children and all that and mm. they are more likely to take care of the elderly and the children mm. and all that and probably some housework as well, mm. but they also have their careers and they, we also have this, they have to look, you know, we have this stereotype that the women have to fit some stereotype, you know, or how to look and dress and all that, which we get from the commercial media and the social media and all that. So there's a lot of challenges women are facing in terms of this because they have so many roles. It's easier for us men because you know, we have not traditionally had the same domestic responsibilities, although we are stepping up more and more to, 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 to take them on. And we also don't have to prove ourselves as, mm. as much, you know. Mm. We don't have to look as the models in the advertisements, you know, which career women often have to do, you know. So they are faced with much more challenging task to keep this all together, you know. So it's not a you know, it's a great development, of course, and progress, but I think we still need to find 
a more healthy way of, you know, for women in society to do what they want to do instead and, and, and realize they can't do everything. They can't look like, all look like supermodels and have <laughs> houses mm. which are very clean and mm. take care of children and have their careers. You know, it's impossible, you know. So uh, I think we need to find a better balance in balance. this. Yeah. In, 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 the coming, in the coming years. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's talk about uh, something related to the Icelandic culture. I think this is the word I really try to learn well. So how do you pronounce it? Teta redast. Is it? Teta redast. <laughs> okay, I got close. Uh, so, <laughs> Teta redast. Okay. So what is it and what is its cultural significance in Iceland? Tell us about it. Yeah. I think it's very characteristic of characteristic of of Icelanders that are us, this attitude. This means really it will work out fine, you know, no problem, you know. So we are very spontaneous, you know, and also come up again. We have a small community, which means that we haven't had this strong bureaucracy, you know, which the bigger nations have. So we can make things happen really fast. You know, okay, we need to do this. Okay, I call him on Friday and we do this on Saturday. You know, no problem, you know. And so we have this, you know, you know, attitude, you know, it will be okay. You know, okay, we haven't planned this, but we will be okay. And we are a little bit as well informal in our relationships. You know, it doesn't have to be formalized into some, you know, structure and bureaucracy. We just take up the phone or meet somebody and, you know, we make things happen. And since we have been able to do this, you know, we always think, you know, this will work out fine because I just call this guy or, you know, when we do this, you know, so we can do a lot of things very quickly, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and we often dream big, you know, mm. we, we believe we can do anything, you know, this mm. is a, some mentality like in sports, you know, we have a population of 340, 50,000, you know, mm. but we believe that we can win the best nations in football or whatever, you know. So we have this confidence, you know, that we can do all kinds of things. And this is also, again, related to our isolation, you know, in, in the Atlantic and all that, and, and uh, this culture. And, and so we believe we can do anything and, and we can do it just by, you know, uh, pulling our sleeves up, you know, mm. okay, let's do this thing. <laughs> and because we don't have to look through all the, uh, go through all the uh, canals, and we could just, you know, and we, if we only, you know, pull our sleeves up, we mm. can do all kinds of things, you know. And I think uh, that the red dust is a part of it. So we are maybe, could be maybe uh, careless, mm. you know. Like relaxed, know. calm. Yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> relaxed. Mm. Relaxed is the, is the right term for this. We are relaxed in these terms because we don't have to apply for this three months in advance. We can just, you know, do it, yeah. you know, mm. when, when we feel like it. <laughs> yeah, but of exactly. course, society is changing, you know, it's becoming more formal, you mm. know, technology, globalization, and all that is making society more formal. So, you know, Icelandic society is developing, of course, like all societies, you know, and whether that will be beneficial for us or not is another question. But, you know, we might lose this in 20, 30, 50, 70 years, you know, I don't know. But this has been a characteristic of the Icelandic, yes, definitely. That's mm. So do you think it contributes to happiness and resilience among the Icelandic people? Mm, yes, I think so. I think so. Uh, because it's relaxed, you know. It's not very, you know, we are not, you know, uh, very uh, worried about mm. these things because they usually turn out fine, mm. you know, so we are accustomed to that. So we are relaxed about it and we are, uh, don't think we need to, do, you know, have a lot of worry a lot about, you know, whether things will happen or not, or life in general. Yeah, because mm. life in general, you know, we're an affluent society. You know? mm. So if this doesn't work out... Yeah, something so else will be, work out. It will be fine. So be it. You know, <laughs> so be it. Nobody, you know, there's no big damage, you know. So it mm. doesn't really cut that deep, you know, <laughs> I think. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm always just talking about generally. Some things are more important than others as well, but I'm trying to make some general statements here. You have to bear that in mind. <laughs> of course, so yeah, yeah. We have, you know, so, and, and these Nordic nations, you know, with this strong welfare system and all that, provides us with a safety net, mm. you know. So everybody can go to school. Everybody can get healthcare and all kinds of stuff, you know. And since we have this safety net, you know, we can feel a little bit more relaxed about, you know, making mistakes or, or whatever, mm. you know. Mm. And, 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 you know, that's probably a part of it as well. You know? Yeah, exactly. So how do people in Iceland see money and material possessions? Uh, do they put a lot of value on having more money and being rich like the Americans? Uh, yes, actually we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's so interesting I, I to know. Top, I think this topic of happiness mm. is full of contradictions. Mm. You know, one thing in is we have this really strong community mm. spirit in Iceland. Mm. We are also have this very strong individu individualistic tendencies as well. You know, so in some ways we are more like the Americans than the Nordic nations, the other Nordic nations, you know. So we are in this mixed positions, you know. And I talked in my book, Sport in Iceland, about the Icelandic athletes, you know, and mm -hmm. the Icelandic teams. I, 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 I framed us as collective individuals, something like that, you know, individualistics, you know. Mm -hmm. We have these three really strong communal elements, but we are also very, you know, individualistic in terms of material possession and stuff like that. So, you know, we need to have the best cars and the best clothes and everything. So uh, there is this status, which is very strong in Iceland. And also because of the small community, you compare yourself to your mates and your neighbors and people you know. So we have really this materialistic attitude. You know, yeah, attitude. And we buy, you know, expensive cars and expensive clothes and everything, you know, and, and you know. You know, which is, you know, which is it contradicts that happiness is only built on this inside, but uh, I think it, it doesn't add to our happiness, you know, it's just a characteristic of us as a nation as well. Another contradiction in, in, in this happiness is that uh, uh, the Icelanders always score very highly on the use of antidepressants, you know. Uh, which could be, you know, that, you know, uh, all kinds of reasons behind it, you know, the, the, the status competition between the Icelanders, between each other, you know, in terms of material possession. It could also be, you know, as I mentioned earlier, women are, have to do all kinds of things and become some kind of super women to function in society. And it's impossible, you know. It could, also, we have long and dark winters. You know, it's very dark winters for, you know, six, seven months a year and harsh weather during the winter time. But it could also be, you know, just that we have better access to healthcare professionals, you know, which, you know, so, you know, there are some contradictions there. So it's not an easy, simple, you know, relationship between happiness and, and, and culture, you know. There are all kinds of things which, which, which you know, interact in this in this, in this, uh, you know, equation. You equation, know. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, uh, you know, I think there are some contradictions. And the material gains, you know, we place a lot of emphasis on that. Antidepressants, you know, are both elements which contradict the mm -hmm. uh, happiness, uh, you know. Uh, Being the inside uh, thing, like happiness comes from inside. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Somehow we have a society, mm -hmm. and I always come back to the same thing. The key thing is everything here is community. You know, having a community which is strong with social relationship, people know each other, social capital. In my view, as a sociologist, that's the key thing. So, you know, for for you know all communities, you know, small rural communities, communities, neighborhoods. I think it's always very important to build communities. You know, whether you're in a big city or not, if the neighborhoods build strong communities with strong social ties, it will benefit everybody, you know, well-being, individual and collective well-being. It always comes back to that, in my view. You know? mm, I understand. So I want to... So, end so, 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 it, so it's not only, you know, it's just not 
preserved only for tiny nations like Iceland. You know, you can build neighborhoods and all that on this community basis with these community elements in place. I think that's that's a key issue. One yes. more point. I have to address it before yes, we leave. Please. Of course, the nature and being outside is of course important to happiness. I forgot to mention it earlier. Mm. And we have this nature and people walk mountains and all that, you know. So we are a lot of outdoor people as well. And, and we should show that being outdoors with the, you know, in a clean atmosphere and all that is very beneficial for us as well. So I had to mention it in the end. But uh, <laughs> thank you as well. Yeah. And, and, and look, yeah. look me up anyway when you're here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.